Jason Bateman ain't Michael Bluth anymore. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 disturbing Ozark moments. Well, it ain't gonna suck itself, sweetheart. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at the most intense and nerve-wracking scenes from the first season of Netflix's Ozark. As you can expect, a spoiler alert is now in effect. Number 10, Jonah and the Gun. Who the hell said you could come in here without my permission? Throughout the season, the youngest member of the Bird family is also given the least to do. But the few times Jonah is called to action, he does not disappoint. After finding out his father is a money launderer for a Mexican drug cartel and seeing good old Bobby Dean's rotting corpse on the family's dock, Jonah asks Buddy to teach him how to shoot. Why the hell did they move here? They don't like guns. This proves handy when one of the cartel's lackeys breaks into the bird's home, and Jonah, wanting to be the good son, decides to protect his family. Stay back. You don't want to shoot anybody, Jonah. The click of the gun is even tenser than a gunshot. Thank God Buddy was there to save the day. What kind of man talks like that to a child? Number nine, the garbage truck. So, he's a smart man. He can teach you a few things. When considering the best ways to go out, getting hit by a garbage truck might not rank too high. The arrogant Eugenia has a small part to play on Ozark, appearing in only two episodes, but her sudden and creative departure leaves a lasting impression. During a heated argument with her son, real estate agent Sam Dermody, Eugenia walks out onto the street, and unfortunately, she's too caught up in the verbal conflict to look both ways before crossing. Then destiny drives in. Well, at least she didn't suffer. Well, probably. I am not listening to your foolishness anymore. La, Are you really doing la, this right now? La, 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 la. Number eight, Marty and Wendy's confused sex. All right, I'm gonna make it. A major plot point throughout the season is Marty and Wendy's failing marriage. The fire between the two has long since burned out, forcing them to find other outlets to release their frustrations. In an attempt to feel something again, Wendy has an affair with a guy named Gary. After Marty finds and studies their sex tape, he decides to try out a few of Gary's moves on Wendy. After everything is said and done, Wendy rightfully asks, what the hell was that about? But Marty just brushes it off. Maybe they should spend some of their money on couples therapy. I thought you like it. What's that supposed to mean? Number seven, Marty's co-workers are murdered. Pilot episodes can make or break a series, especially ones like Ozark that are designed to be binge-watched. A boring first hour, and soon people will be switching to the latest season of Orange is the New Black. So, to capture our attention, Netflix decided to open the show with some murder. My father shouldn't have to see his child die. <laughs> it takes only 25 minutes for things to hit the fan big time. That's when Marty's co-workers, including his best friend Bruce, are bumped off by Dell for skimming. Who knew that stealing from a sociopathic drug kingpin could be so bad for your health? Number six, the pastor's wife. Some things are so terrifying that the idea alone is enough to send chills down your spine. Pastor Mason Ryan and his pregnant wife Grace are two of the only genuinely good people in the entire series. When Mason refuses to give in to the demands of the local kingpin, Jacob and Darlene Snell decide to use Grace to teach him a quick lesson. Tell me Grace is okay. Grace is past saving us, Bird. The gory details happen off screen, leading the audience to imagine how the poor pastor's wife meets her maker, which in a way is even more terrifying. Number five, Sugarwood nearly crushes Marty. Sugarwood's her pet name for him. As in, uh, you know, I, I got some it. Of that sugar I got it. Yes, Ozark's pilot is named after a man's penis, but obviously, it is not the main focus of the episode. We are introduced to Marty, his family, his co workers, and Dell one of the series' primary antagonists. Despite the aforementioned murder of Marty's co-workers, the grisliest scene in the first episode comes when Mr. Sugarwood himself is thrown out of a window and lands right in front of Marty, who is on his way to confront the man about his affair. At least Marty was spared an awkward conversation. Number four, Charlotte's drowning. Your father's laundering money for a Mexican drug cartel. I shit you not. Marty and Wendy's eldest child, Charlotte, surprised us as she developed from an annoying bratty teen in the first episode to a multi-layered and mature character by the end of the season. Her best moment arrives when she tries running back to Chicago, but ends up being found by Wendy and Ruth. After a tearful reunion with Marty, she goes for a swim to clear her head. 
As the couple fights over how they've screwed up their children, Charlotte struggles to stay above water. The most disturbing part is the smile on Charlotte's face due to the rush she gets from almost drowning. Number three, the eyeballs. Oh God, Jesus Christ. Honestly, Marty could not have said it better. After the explosive opening episode, Dell takes a back seat for the majority of the show, with the Snells serving as the main villains. This all changes in episode eight, when we see a flashback to how Marty and Bruce ended up involved with the cartel. Masquerading as a ceramic tile mogul, Dell scouts the two as potential employees when Marty notices that Lewis has been skimming from his company. You see, the feds were snooping around, which caused you to make some piss poor attempt to cover your tracks, which allowed a shrewd person like Marty Bird to identify your shoddy work. After Marty accepts the opportunity to launder Dell's money, the drug lord drops his charming persona. Lewis is promptly murdered and his eyes removed from his corpse. Del sure takes the expression, see no evil seriously. What do you want me to do with them? Save them for a rainy day. Number two, Vulture Obsession. Don't worry, Jonah is not picking up the carcasses of dead animals because he's a serial killer in training. No, it's considerably more innocent than that. He just wants to use them as bait for vultures so he can study the bird's behavior. You know, for science. Everyone reacts to tragedy and adversity in their own special way. So if nothing else, Jonah is at least one of a kind but that doesn't make it any less worrisome and creepy, especially considering how young he is. Yeah, if you cut their bellies a little bit, the vultures will come swooping down at like 35 miles an hour. Number one, Dell bites a bullet. With millions of dollars on the line, the feds hot on his tail, and a mountain of corpses in his wake, what seals Dell's fate? An ill-timed insult. And somehow convinced me to partner with a bunch of rednecks. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? He calls Darlene a redneck, and unfortunately for Dell, she does not tolerate such disrespectful language. His shattered face is disturbing enough as it is, but this moment ranks at the top because it's so unexpected and happens in the blink of an eye. Nothing in the lead up even hints at the possibility of Dell being killed off, so it comes completely out of left field. After such an explosive climax, we can't wait for season two. Are you out of your goddamn minds? Huh? Are you crazy? Do you know who that guy works for? I suggest you watch your mouth. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.